This is my camera control macro pad. It's an unhoused PCB with switches on it so I can change my camera angles while I'm filming. It's pretty handy, but it's very bare bones, large, and fragile. That's where this little guy comes in. This is a third-party Nintendo NES controller that I found at a thrift store for $3, and I thought I could make some use of it. The great thing about working on old electronics like this is how dead simple they are on the inside. My goal is basically to tap in my own wires to each of the individual buttons and send those to keys on the macro pad, which I can then program to camera controls or whatever I want, really. Now, I'm not going to use the original cable because there's not a dedicated wire for each button. It's a little more complex. This controller also has these oscillating switches for the A and B buttons. These basically repeat those inputs at different speeds, which is functional for some games, but not really for a macro pad. So I'll be soldering in my own wires. To figure out which pins go to which switches, I traced out the continuity with a paint marker. This step is a little unnecessary, but I wanted to make the soldering a bit easier for myself. I chose to use some thicker than necessary wire to make sure the thing would last over time. I feel like every time I do a wiring video on my channel, I talk about how it's not my strong suit and I'm not very good at it, but I always end up doing more electronics projects and diving a bit deeper each time. The fun aspect of attempting things you're not very comfortable with is that you're basically guaranteed to learn something new. While using thicker gauge wire might have been a good choice for durability here, it was not a good choice for ergonomics. I wasn't thinking about how quickly the size adds up when I had about a dozen or so wires, but after some quick cuts to the case, everything fit well enough. Now I just had to wire the thing up to the old keyboard PCB to get it to control the cameras. I had this keyboard laying around after a failed project, actually my first attempt at soldering ever. This is me in my college dorm room almost five years ago, soldering on resistors and the microcontroller. It actually worked, I used it as my main keyboard for a bit, but after a few years I had a whole row of keys die, and it's just been a macro pad ever since. It's cool to come back to it years later and give it a more permanent life hooked up to the NES controller. Now at this point because of my extremely thick wiring harness, I realized I wanted to add a bit of weight to the controller. Just something to keep it in place so the cable doesn't drag it around. I have this little chunk of metal that I think was a weight from the base of a sewing machine, and it's about the perfect size. My plan is to make a little wooden base for the controller and stick the weight inside. So I've got a little bit of wood shaping to do. I've never tried this method of removing material with a circular saw before, but I liked it. Finishing this surface took a while though. With the channel cut and my chunk of metal fitting, I now had my weighted base for the controller. I'll fix the two together with some simple machine nuts and bolts glued to the inside of the remote. And since I'm having fun experimenting on this project, I'm going to finish off the base block with some resin. I used some plastic trading card sleeves and hot glue to seal off the sides and then started to mix up my goop. Mixing up silicones and resins is so much fun, and I've been looking for an excuse to get back into it. All the materials I'm using are probably expired, so we'll see if it actually cures well. But at the end of the day, this doesn't need to look pretty, it just needs to be heavy. To my surprise, it actually cured pretty quick, and I was able to get right to sanding. There was a lot more air bubbles than I would have liked, but most of this surface isn't going to be seen anyway, and a bit of finishing helped hide some of my mistakes. With the weighted base now done, the whole controller assembly was basically finished. Only thing left to do before setting up the custom functions of my buttons is shielding the wires and building a rudimentary box for the keyboard PCB. This was basically just a bunch of pallet wood stuck together. Since the controller is doing all the inputs now, the actual PCB can get hidden away underneath the workbench somewhere. And with that, we have a functional controller. 
So let me give you a quick demo of this thing. Here's how I've set it up. The top button on the D-pad that I just pressed takes us to the top cam. Left takes us to the B cam and right takes us to this big wide camera. And whenever I get a fourth camera set up, this bottom one will go to that. Select and start go to my left and right monitors, mostly for streaming. So this will take me to OBS and my editing software on the other one. A and B control my audio inputs. So B is my main audio interface that I'm talking into right now. And A is just the overhead shotgun mic for uh, various tool sounds, background noise. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this thing. It takes up a lot less space on the workbench than the old macro pad did. It feels a lot nicer, better to use, more durable. Because it's literally just wired up to a keyboard, I can have it set to do any keystrokes I want it to. There's a lot of flexibility in this setup. Now, that being said, I think you could just get an NES to USB adapter and get the computer to recognize this as a controller and then adapt the controller inputs into keyboard inputs. But I had the old keyboard PCB waiting around for a project to repurpose it, so the only money I had to spend on this was the three bucks for the controller. And yeah, it's a bit silly. It's a roundabout way to do something that's actually pretty simple, but that's the channel, made for the sake of making, you know? Anyway, it's time for me to put this thing to work on filming the next project, so thank you for your time.